Thank you so much uh, for joining our affiliate mastermind session today. It's my pleasure seeing you all today. Uh, I'm your host, Kim, and today we have uh, Anjik Zainuddin uh, from Philip Capital Management Sandhyan Bahad who will be sharing, will be sharing uh, with us some of the products uh, that Philip Capital uh, Malaysia offers to our clients and how we can actually uh, utilize the knowledge uh, shared by Anjik Zainuddin today to your clients how to navigate along the uh, volatilities in the market using the products that we offer. Allow me to introduce Anjik Zainuddin. Uh, he originally joined Philly Capital Group in August 20, uh, 2007, where he played a pivotal role in maintaining strong relationships with both in-house clients and financial consultants. Simultaneously, he contributed significantly to the development and execution of products and product channel strategies. Prior to this, he served as a dealer representative at a stock booking firm for several years. In 2018, he pursued an opportunity with a government-linked investment company specializing in ETFs and managed account services before returning to Philly Capital Group in February 2023. Anjik Zainuddin brings over two decades of diverse experience in the financial industry, encompassing risk management, investment, and client services. Without further ado, I would like to kickstart the session with a few questions in our mind. We all know that Anjik Zainuddin, yeah. investors often feel very emotional when it comes to investment decision making. Sometimes we are clouded by uh, fear, you know, great things like that. In your open opinion, how could investors actually overcome this fear and greed uh, when it comes to investment decision making? Okay. Uh uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, for having me today. Uh, I'm so uh, delighted to be here. And uh, thanks again, uh, Kim, mm -hmm. for the generous introduction. Uh, well, I mean, uh, to answer your question again, uh, that's what I'm going to uh, talk about today, uh, the emotional part of investing, which is, uh, I would say, very, very crucial. Yeah. Um, perhaps before we start a proper uh, presentation or so-called uh, agenda for today. Uh, I attended a briefing or so-called webinar organized by uh, FIMM last yeah. last month uh, yeah. in August. Yeah, uh, to be exact on the 20th, 24th of August. I believe uh, some of you uh, participants or audience over here, I mean, attended this or joined this webinar as well. Okay, during the webinar, um, they uh, ran a poll uh, whereby they asked the participants what are the biggest challenges that faced by uh, investors uh, in Malaysia, yeah, yeah. so to speak? So uh, the first one, the top uh, biggest issue, yeah, during I mean uh, the, the, from the result of this poll, number one is emotional investing. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. why I'm saying uh, this is a crucial yeah. part of uh, investment that I will yeah. be covering today. Yeah. And maybe uh, I'm not at liberty to share the slides from FIMM. Uh, maybe I can just read out uh, to you all uh, the outcome yeah, uh, yeah. from this uh, polling uh, result. Uh, as I mentioned just now, emotional investing, yeah. top of the list, number one. Yeah. Secondly, uh, loss aversion. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, investors, yeah, they are fearing I mean, losses more than valuing gains yeah. from the investment. Yeah. And uh, number three, uh, according to the result, is the uh, herding mentality. Yeah, the tendency to follow others. Yep. Yeah, uh, of course there are some other things that yeah uh, I, I can just share like uh, confirmation bias. Yeah, the inability to take action and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So, so perhaps I answer your first yeah, question. So you. maybe we can move on to the some of the sharings that mm. you know uh Anjik Dean will be sharing with us. Like uh we all know that uh you know emotions play a very important role in investment decision making. Yeah, in your upcoming slides, I think you will be showing us like some of the uh, emotions, you know, the role of emotions that uh, it play in investment decision making and how could investors possibly overcome from that. Would you like to share more on that? All right. Uh, thanks again, uh, Kim. All right. Today, uh, what we're going to do is to discuss the role emotions play in investment decision. Yeah. Usually, whether in finance or uh, investment, we thought that mastering the numbers is essential, important. But I think uh, equally important, mastering ourselves 
uh, in terms of the uh, emotion, yeah, uh, truly differentiates the, the most successful investors. Investing isn't isn't just about uh, crunching numbers, data, predicting market trends. Yeah, actually, it's equally important to have the right mindset. Yeah, the right mental framework, a mindset that can navigate the high and low tides of uh, our emotions and uncertainties. Today, we're going to explore the critical aspects of these masterminds for investors. Uh, we're going to uh, dig further into the psychology of investing, uh, understanding why emotion can often lead us off track, and most importantly, uh, how to conquer them. Yeah? Uh, we're going to learn how important it is, the power of patience and discipline in our investment journey. So today, uh, I'm going to take you on a journey into this fascinating world of investment. A journey where the mind takes center stage. Yeah? Remember, yeah. investment is not just about numbers. Yeah? Yep. It's about mastering the mindset. So after yeah. all, that's why we, we are here today anyway, right? Philip yeah. Mastermind. All right. So before we move on to the next slide, bear in mind yeah, uh, when you look at uh, this slide, uh, these people behind all these emojis are just like us, you yeah, and me, yeah? Yeah. ordinary persons. Ordinary we have person, emotions, yeah. sometimes yeah. we smile, uh, yeah. sometimes we cry yeah. Yeah, and whatnot. So we can have all kind of emotional expression, yeah. but more importantly, yeah. are, how, how do we manage yeah, these emotions, yeah, which is crucial for uh, successful investing? Yeah. So we are to share more on like some, you know, emotion elements like fear, you know, great things like that. I'm sure that participants on the ground, they are very, very interested to know about that. All right. Good that you asked me just now. Uh, you, you mentioned about fear, greed and all. Okay. Uh, I think uh, all of us yeah, uh, are aware uh, the most, um, I mean, the, the strongest emotion that we have yeah, as a human. Uh, fear and greed. Yeah, of course there are some other emotions. But let me ask you, Kim, between fear and greed, which is the strongest? Um, what do you think? I think greed, perhaps, because maybe investors are often greedy. They want to get more returns. But at the same time, I also think of you know sometimes if perhaps if my portfolio is in the loss, mm. you know mm. maybe I'm in the fear as well. And sometimes investors also have. A feeling called for more fear mm -hmm. of missing out True. when people are also buying a stock you know they are right. also following right. the uh right. the crowd uh, basically mm -hmm. okay. so maybe in the next slides you'll be able to share some of the uh findings right right okay you mentioned that okay uh greed is the stronger between these two yeah the fact is actually fear is the most i mean the, the strongest of these two yeah, yeah? uh for example we, we all buy insurance because of what Fear of fear getting of, sick, yeah, risk yeah. management, risk yeah. management, or whatnot. Okay, uh, uh, according to the, I mean, uh, from these all these experts, uh, they they mentioned that yeah, between fear and greed, fear is the stronger yeah. emotion that uh, one can can I mean uh, have. Uh, fear actually can lead to impulsive selling. Yeah, um, when investors are gripped by fear, they may sell their investment in a hurry. Yeah, of course with the intention to limit your losses and whatnot, just yeah. like I mentioned just now. The, this impulsive selling can actually result in a selling asset like stocks or even unit trust yeah. at an unfavorable price. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, potentially locking in losses that might have been just temporary. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But it is also crucial to neutralize this fear-driven impulse yeah? Yeah. with a long-term perspective yeah. uh, and a well-thought-out investment strategy. Yeah. Yeah? And secondly, if you look at this uh, chart or slide, yeah? market downturns can trigger panic among investors as they witness the value of the portfolios decline. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Fear can lead to a hurt mentality. Remember just now, my I was sharing about these uh, FIMM uh, findings. Yeah. Uh, number two, actually, sorry, number three, actually, the hurts mentality. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, like what we see here, uh, see here on this slide. Uh, uh, you jump, I jump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they don't know, but this it seems like everybody's going there. Yeah. yeah. So seems like okay, uh, this looks good. Yeah. It's gonna be good. So I just join. Yeah. You jump, I jump, causing investors to follow the crowd in selling of assets, yeah. even when it might not be the best course of action at, yeah. at that point of time. Yeah. So to offset or respond to this kind of a panic selling, 
it is essential for investors to stay informed, uh, diversify their portfolios and have a clear plan uh, in place uh, for turbulent market condition. And also uh, during this uh, fear-induced market uh, turmoil, so to speak, uh, maintaining a rational perspective is very important. Yeah. Yeah? We should resist making decisions solely based on emotion. Yeah. Yeah? But instead, uh, we must focus on overall or uh, comprehensive uh, analysis uh, and look at a long-term investment strategy. Yeah. So by looking or assessing yeah. this market condition objectively, we can yeah. we can identify uh, all these opportunities yeah, during all sorts of challenges, yeah. whether market ups and down, and yeah, yeah we yeah. can make an informed decision uh, yeah. to align with our financial goals. Lah. Yep, correct. Right. Ultimately, need to be uh, rational. True. What about greed? Will we like to share more on okay. the other part okay. of the emotion? We talked about greed just now. Uh, sorry, fear. The next one is greed. Okay, yep. greed has the power, the power to distort our judgment uh, by magnifying the potential profits. Okay, yep. when it comes to greed, uh, yeah, we want to have a higher return. In this state, we might want, we, we might ignore all this uh, analysis that we have done earlier. Yeah, we may overlook uh, market volatility and disregard uh, all these warning signs. Yeah? This so-called clouded judgment can lead to impulsive decisions, yeah. often resulting in a substantial financial losses and whatnot. And uh, secondly, investors may also take on excessive risk yeah. uh, under the influence of greed. Yeah? Yeah. We are more likely to take on excessive risk in pursuit of uh, higher returns. Yeah. Uh, we might allocate a disproportionate uh, portion of portfolio to high-risk assets yeah. without uh, adequate diversification. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, this will increase uh, risk exposure yeah? uh, and make our portfolio vulnerable to market downturns and yeah. uh, uh, heightened uh, volatility. Yeah? And uh, thirdly, uh, greed often uh, drives investors to chase quick returns. Yeah. We learn in accounting uh, ACC 101, FIFO. But here FIFO, it doesn't mean first in, first out, but rather fast in, fast out. Yeah. yeah. They want we want to look at immediate gratification. Yeah. yeah? Uh, immediate result. So these investors they might be uh, tempted uh, by the latest market trends, uh, speculative assets, yeah. disregarding the importance of a long-term investment mm -hmm. strategy. So their mission of quick gains can lead to impulsive decision yeah. and higher likelihood of losses. Yeah. Uh, remember, uh, it's crucial actually to maintain a balanced approach to investing, prioritize yeah. sound financial planning uh, instead of greed or quick, quick gains. Yeah? Yeah. So maybe we can just move on. Um, remember, we talked about fear and greed just now, but fear and greed are not the only emotion that we need to deal yeah. with when it comes to uh, making investment yeah. decision. By looking at this diagram, yeah. of course, market ups, the, the cycle, I mean, ups and downs. Uh, I would call this uh, diagram as an emotional roller coaster right now. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, let's start from the bottom. bottom uh, when the market uh, is uh, at the bottom, uh, people normally at this uh, caution stage, so, so, so to speak. So normally what we think do, during this, at this stage, yeah, uh, we will wait to see whether it will last. Yeah? Yeah. And then when the market starts to moving up, we gain a little bit of confidence. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, now we think differently. This time is different. Yeah? Yeah. There will be a boom in the market. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, yeah. in the future. So we will start buying. Yeah. True enough, market hit the peak. Yeah. And then... Start to collapse. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> then the greedy will come in. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Now this is easy money. Better still, let's borrow some money to buy more stocks. Oh, okay. leverage. Leverage. Okay. We should make money, one. Okay, at this stage. But what happened? Okay. Next. Yeah. Move the market will turn down. Turn. Yeah. I mean, down downward. Yeah. They didn't move in the same way as investors. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it comes to different stage denial. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, it doesn't go as what we plan. Yeah, we borrowed money and whatnot. So we are in this stage of denial. Well, this is just a normal minor hiccup. It will rebound. Okay, still we don't yeah. want to cut our losses and all. Yeah. Then market go down further. Yeah. Yeah. When the people will start to panic. Yeah. Uh, selling. Yeah. yeah. Despair. Yeah? yeah. Most people will sell here. 
Yeah. Yeah. I will never touch stress again. Yes, yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. But actually, uh, what happened, this is actually where the smart money will come in. Yeah. This is where the smart money will accumulate, start accumulating yep. uh, the position. Yep. Yeah. Uh, likewise, yep. uh, during that uh, stage uh, earlier, uh, yep. between overconfidence and greed, uh, that's when the smart money will start offloading the yep. position. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so we spend some time talking about, you know, the emotions like greed, mm -hmm. fear, you know, overconfidence, things like that. Yeah. How, how should we overcome emotions? How could investors overcome emotions in terms of investment All right. decision? All right. Good question. We're going to uh, that uh, point uh, shortly. Okay. So next slide, what uh, to answer your question. Yeah? Uh, of course, we have all these kind of emotion. How are we going to uh, tackle this? issue these emotions yeah? uh, of course first of all we need to recognize yeah. becoming aware of one's our emotions and uh, their potential uh, impact on our investment decision yeah. this is the initial step we need to recognize yeah. uh, all this uh, fear greed and other emotions yeah uh, once we acknowledge yeah, uh, we can take the next steps to mitigate all these emotional response by uh, perhaps by pausing or reflecting before we make uh, any new decision on our investment. Secondly, once we recognize, we will we, we should prioritize uh, data driven decision making over emotional reaction. Yeah. We should rely on thorough analysis, uh, comprehensive historical data, yeah. market research, yeah, so that we can make uh, informed choices that align with our uh, so-called uh, long-term financial objectives. Yep. Emotion tend to be reactive, yeah? uh, short-term, uh, and can lead to impulsive uh, decision. Yep. But by I mean relying on data-driven strategies, we are grounded. Yeah, actually, yep. uh, we are I mean more rational and more likely to yield favorable outcomes yeah? yep. in the, in the long term. So, uh, thirdly, how are we going to overcome this uh, emotion? We need to be disciplined. Yeah. A disciplined investment strategy acts as a buffer, yeah? as a buffer against uh, emotional decision making. This strategy should include uh, clear guidelines for our asset allocation, yeah. risk tolerance and investment goals. Uh, it helps us to stay on course. Even when market fluctuates, ups and downs, our emotional impulses try to deviate. Yeah? But with a well-structured plan, it, it is actually a roadmap for us to, to navigate uh, regardless of market condition yeah. yeah and it will reinforce our rational choices over emotional uh, emotional ones yeah <clears throat> okay uh, this is a, a few steps lah. how are we going to uh, overcome uh, emotion next one is about patient yeah a patient is like a steady hand on uh, investment wheel yeah. holding tight on the uh, steering steering wheel so to speak yeah. maybe some of you are familiar with the slang terms like diamond yeah. hands Paper hands. I like okay. this analogy. <laughs> right. What is uh, diamond hands? Diamond hands refers to those who are, I mean, uh, they've done their analysis. Yeah, uh, they they do they, they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, when is the exit and entry and exit point? Yeah, mm -hmm. they stick to the plan. Yeah, uh, whatever whatever happen, I mean, uh, come what may, uh, as long as the uh, parameters or the strategy is still valid, yep. they will stick to the plan. On the other hand this uh, so-called paper hands mm -hmm. okay these are those people who tend to how to say um they, they will i mean they, they tend to panic sell mm -hmm. even at the first sign of a market uh downturn weakness, uh. weakness mm -hmm. or even a slight drop of uh slight drop of their uh, stock market stock price yep. yeah so these are those uh, with the paper hands like we, we call it yeah so it implies resisting the temptation to constantly react to short-term market fluctuation and instead adopting a long-term uh, perspective. Yep. Yeah? So as a patient investor, we need to understand that building wealth takes time. Yeah, yeah? correct. Uh, and we are prepared to weather the ups and downs of the market while staying focused on the uh, our ultimate uh, financial objectives. Secondly, um, impulsive reaction to short-term market movements can lead to costly mistakes. Yeah. Investors we should avoid to urge the, the urge to buy or sell 
based on daily or even monthly fluctuations yep. uh, un unless if you are a, a trader short term trader yeah but instead as an investor uh, we should trust in our research analysis and investment strategy remember that i mentioned about the diamond hands just now okay these are the people that stick to their plan yeah yep. they've done their enough i mean comprehensive research yep. they have their own analysis and investment strategy stick to it so by maintaining this uh, so called discipline and resisting the uh, impulsive decision we will be able to avoid uh, these uh, so called pitfalls of uh, market timing yeah yep. uh, we not here to time the market yeah we we talking about uh, long term investment yep. all right uh, thirdly we can i mean focus on long term goals yeah? those investors who focus on uh, long term goals are better equipped to mm -hmm. make a sound decision yep. yeah this goal actually act as a roadmap yeah. Yeah? Uh, they will help us to stay committed to our i mean uh, investment strategy yeah. Yeah? by staying in the course even yeah, when faced with adversity and market volatility yeah. we, investors they increase their chances of achieving their goals yeah, the objective long term commitment often leads to more stable yeah. and uh, pre predictable uh, returns yeah? yeah not to mention the power of compounding yeah. uh, which can significantly boost uh, wealth over time yep. yeah? i mean it's a common knowledge by investing earnings and dividend uh, leaving our investment untouched for the uh, i mean uh, long term period of time yeah mm -hmm. so it will accelerate accelerate the uh, capital growth yeah? yep. so this uh, compounding effect really can be especially powerful in yep. long term investment so reinforcing the wisdom of uh, investing with passion yep. yeah? okay uh, investing with passion uh, not only that on the next slide uh, this is another important point also yep. uh, balancing risk and rewards yep. yeah uh, in the world of investing uh, understanding risk is uh, fundamental mm -hmm. crucial uh, meaning that uh, we recognize the value mm -hmm. investment can fluctuate of course yeah uh, sometimes uh, the market ups and downs uh, all these are common and there's a possibility of losing money as well yeah we yep. can't deny that so without a clear understanding of risk uh, we may make impulsive choices during market turbulence correct yeah potentially leading to substantial uh, losses and uh, next one is uh, thorough assessment uh, i mean comprehensive assessment of potential rewards yeah? we talk about risk and then uh, the rewards while risk is a significant factor uh, we should also uh, thoroughly evaluate the potential rewards yeah. So it involves uh, considering the expected return, uh, what we can expect from the investment, and uh, to align them with the, our uh, financial goals. Yeah. This is actually uh, essential as well to strike a balance yeah, yeah. between uh, risk and uh, reward. So uh, uh, I mean, uh, usually, usually we will look at uh, certain factors like uh, all these historical performance, uh, growth potential, income generation, when uh, evaluating this uh, potential reward of an investment. Mm -hmm and uh, thirdly uh, diversify your portfolio yeah again uh, uh, a well diversified portfolio can provide stability during uh, market fluctuation it's a common knowledge as different asset may react differently to uh, different economic conditions yeah so by diversifying we, we can aim to achieve a more balanced uh, risk return profile yep. uh, enhancing our ability to weather uh, market mm -hmm. volatility and mm -hmm. work toward our long-term financial goals yep. right uh okay next one okay learning from mistakes are we all learning from our mistake yeah, yeah. easier said than done right so it's not easy yeah. bad habits die hard correct yeah, yeah. correct but actually it is important yeah, to view investing mistake as opportunities yeah uh, import opportunities for growth every misstep uh, in the investment journey can actually provide uh, valuable insights and experience yeah. Uh, rather than dwelling on our past errors, yeah, uh, smart investors normally uh, will, uh, I mean, uh, reflect, analyze uh, all those uh, past errors to understand what went wrong and why. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we we don't want to repeat our errors, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we recognize our mistake. So this kind of knowledge will help us to prevent similar mistake in the future. Yeah. We acknowledge and learn from our mistake. Uh, and then uh, we need to also um, continue to improve our investment skills. Yeah? Yeah. Successful investing requires ongoing learning. Yeah? Uh, develop our skills. Yeah? Market evolve. I, I mean, same goes to our knowledge and approach. We need to evolve as well. So it, it is not a static. Yeah? Investment is not static. Uh, with the new financial instrument, 
yep. technologies, economic factors constantly come into play. So we need to be uh, stay informed and adaptable. Uh, adaptable. Yeah? Yep. So many successful uh, investors, yeah, they prioritize education. Yeah? They they keep learning, uh, seek opportunities to enhance their investment skills, whether through reading, yeah, mm -hmm. attending seminars. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, listen to this kind of uh, talks or. Yeah. Uh, consult with your uh, financial experts. Eh? Yep. So, uh, thirdly, in terms of the uh, one of the best ways to prevent a recurring mistake mm. is to analyze past mm. investment decision critically. Mm. Uh, good thing is that uh, what we learn uh, is that uh, it, it is good to have a journal. Yeah, your your trading or investment journal. Journal. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what have you invested in? Yeah. Uh, a reason for for you to uh, invest into certain stocks, for yep. example. Yeah. So this involves uh, reviewing uh, the rationale behind yep. uh, each choice, uh, yep. or even the outcome, like whether uh, good or bad, uh, yep. or profit or loss. Yep. So by identifying uh, these uh, patterns, uh, your your uh, mistake in the past, mm -hmm. we can establish or set precautions to mm -hmm. prevent uh, similar mistake in the future. Yep. Yeah. So the ability to self reflect make uh, constructive changes mm -hmm. based on past experience uh, is a symbol hallmark of a skilled investors to i yep. mean continually refine your strategies uh, for, for long term yep. success so we share uh, some of the emotional elements that mm. investors would probably have in their mind mm. greed and fear things like that yep. we also share some of the tips that investors could probably consider True. when it comes to their investment decision making avoiding past mistakes, mm -hmm. balancing risk and rewards, be patient, things like that. Yep, so, exactly. um, is there any you know, last word they would like to share with investors uh, on the emotional part before we come in and share how Philly Capital Malaysia can actually help uh, with investors when it comes to overcoming you know, emotional this uh, emotional decision making uh, in the investment decision. All right. Yeah, it's about time, uh, Kim. Yeah. Uh, now we are at the conclusion page. Uh, it's actually natural for investors to experience all these uh, different different kind of emotions, including fear, mm -hmm. greed, and uh, all this excitement. Uh, all uh, different different emotions yeah. when making uh, investment decision. Yeah. This emotion. Uh, actually come out come about from the uncertainty and uh, risk associated with mm -hmm. investing markets they are very unpredictable yeah yep. with these uh, economic factors can lead to emotional reactions yeah so we need to recognize uh, the emotion yeah? recognize emotion they are normal yeah? all these emotions are normal aspect of investing so first step is to recognize your your emotion mm -hmm. and embrace yeah this reality so hopefully it will uh, assist you help you uh, in um, uh, in making more rational uh, investment decision uh, moving forward and uh, secondly being aware successful invest uh, investors understand the impact of emotion on their decision making process uh, they recognize that uh, impulse impulsive actions driven by emotion can lead to financial setbacks so yep. awareness of our emotional state uh, when we are about to uh, mm -hmm. make investment decision is uh, important yeah. Yeah? so it allows us to pause reflect and make uh, rational choices rather than reacting impulsively to market uh, fluctuations so various techniques yeah uh, for example you can set uh, your investment goals mm -hmm. uh, have a proper uh, trading journal yeah uh, diversify, diversify your portfolios or even you can seek for professional advice so all these can help uh, manage your emotion and lead to more successful and consistent uh, investment outcome. Yeah. Yep. You mentioned one of the ways will be uh, you know seeking professional advice mm. from the professional. You know, uh, in Fleet Capital, we are also uh, one of the fund management companies uh, in Malaysia. How how could we help investors in this regard? Okay, uh, I I like to use this analogy uh, mm -hmm. IKEA of finance. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, even our chairman, uh, he's been uh, emphasizing uh, about this idea. Mm -hmm. When you uh, go to any of the IKEA branch, you have all kind of furniture, for example, yeah. everything under one roof. That's what we intend, aspire to do at Philip Capital. Whenever you step in, uh, in one of our offices, yeah, yeah. Uh, PICs or even in yeah. our uh, HQ, uh, you or even your mm -hmm. prospective clients will be able to 
uh, have all kinds of uh, investment services mm -hmm. yeah to help you in your investment journey mm -hmm. uh, whether you are in the i mean stage of uh, uh, starting i mean uh, accumulating your mm -hmm. wealth mm -hmm. yeah uh, Preservation or even distribution yeah, yep. from A to Z. So we provide all this assistance um, in terms of, uh, I mean, uh, advice. Uh, what are the products or services that uh, should match with your uh, objective? Yeah. Of course, there are different people, different people with different uh, risk appetite. Uh, some are moderate, aggressive, or conservative. So we have all these kind of. Uh, different different uh, mandates, uh, services, or even unit trust funds to fit in your yeah. um, so-called uh, financial goals. Financial goals. Yeah. Okay. So in the upcoming uh, slides, we'll be sharing some of the, you know, uh, how how we can actually help investors in this regard. Yeah. Would you like to share more? All right. Okay. Uh, next, I would share about yeah. This is something for those uh, who are not keen to control the emotion. Uh, yeah. It's hard to control my emotion. I, I, It's not easy to deal with yeah. your fear, greed yeah. and all kind of emotion. Yeah. Now everyone can invest, yeah. even uh, without having to crack your head, yeah, studying all these financial ratios, yeah, even without having to deal with all these emotions, yeah, uh, your fear, greed and whatnot. Yeah. So no more sleepless nights yeah, thinking of your portfolio yeah. with this so-called uh, 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 emotions. Uh. Yeah, emotion. Mm -hmm. So, at Philip, now we have a so-called managed account service. Uh, we call it um, dividend enhanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dividend enhanced. Um, it is uh, open for investment, uh, whether uh, by using your own uh, out of money uh, uh, funds. Mm -hmm. Or you can also utilize your EPF funds to invest into these so-called uh, managed account services, mm -hmm. dividend and enhance. Mm -hmm. uh, it is actually an income-driven portfolio mm -hmm. focused on high dividend yielding equities using quantitative methods of investing. So unlike a traditional method, this portfolio relies on uh, AI, mm -hmm. yeah? uh, mm -hmm. artificial intelligence yeah. if you want to call it. So no more emotional bias in coming up with investment decision. Yeah. Rain or shine, the portfolio will religiously abide by the outcome of the quant model. Yep. We already have the, I mean, the, the, the model. Uh, yep. We have already set uh, certain parameters. Yep. So whatever outcome from this so-called model, yep. uh, we will just follow uh, A to Z. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the only, I mean, uh, human intervention is the execution uh, yep. for this portfolio. Yeah. So there's no more fear. There's no more uh, yep. uh, greed. Uh, to deal with, uh, I mean, in managing this uh, portfolio. So yeah. this is, uh, I mean, good uh, alternative or uh, option for those who wish to invest yeah. without having to again uh, thinking about uh, studying all yeah. these financial ratios and uh, deal with your uh, all kind of emotions. Yeah. In the first twenty or thirty minutes of the presentation, we have shared like uh, the shortcomings of emotion. Mm -hmm. Would you like to actually share, you know, more that we actually didn't cover in the beginning of presentation, and after that, perhaps you can actually share the benefits of using quantitative methods mm -hmm. when it comes to, you know, investment decision. -making. Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks again, uh, Kim. All right. So moving on, our next slide. I mean, uh, before we go into more details of this so-called Philip. Uh, uh, dividend enhanced. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at the uh, shortcomings, uh, disadvantages of emotional decision making. We talk about, uh, I mean, in the past half an hour, we talk about emotion. We we, we know that we learn that emotion can cloud judgment and mm -hmm. lead to biased decision making. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and emotional decision are often based on short term fluctuation, yeah. short term triggers rather than long term trends. And uh, emotional decision also can lead to missed opportunities and higher risk. Uh, emotional decision can lead to inconsistent investment performance. But with this uh, so-called uh, service, uh, manage, uh, dividend enhanced, uh, where we are using quantitative methods. Mm -hmm. yeah? So what are the benefits? The advantages of uh, using this uh, quant method, uh, uh, in short. Quantitative methods or quant methods rely on data driven. Yeah? Mm -hmm. No more emotional bias when mm -hmm. uh, making uh, this uh, investment decision. Uh, these methods, uh, can identify patterns mm -hmm. or trend that may not apparent to human eye. Mm -hmm. yeah? Of course, we can have a 
best fund manager in town. Yeah. yeah. But how many start that they can study in a week or so called or in a month? Yeah. yeah? But by relying on this so called quant methods, they can screen through hundreds or even thousands of stocks yeah. in a very yeah. short period it's of time. It's a more systematic approach, I see. Yes, and yeah. very efficient. Yeah? Mm. And it offers a systematic approach, uh, and uh, this method can lead to more consistent investment performance. Now. So, those are the benefits, yeah. I mean, advantages uh, of using uh, quant methods uh, as opposed to. Uh, traditional investment management where we rely on uh, human uh, to study uh, uh, companies uh, uh, financial uh, reports and all yeah yeah are there any examples of successful quantitative uh, models that you have probably heard of yeah um, I think uh, there are a few uh, which is a uh, quite uh, so called uh, famous or, or popular mm -hmm. uh, so but but today i will just share with you three of them mm -hmm. uh, i mean some examples of a quant method mm -hmm. in uh, in uh, stock selection mm -hmm. uh, number one is the dividend growth dividend mm -hmm. growth model is a quant method of investing mm -hmm. which assume that dividend payment will continue to grow at a constant rate indefinitely mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. but this model does not consider other facts like that uh, that may impact stock value. Uh, we know that market changes, mm, yeah, ups yeah, and downs, correct. there's industry trends and company specific events. So uh, this method does not take into consideration all these uh, factors. Mm -hmm. lah. And uh, the other one is, uh, I would like to talk about Graham's formula. Graham's formula also known as uh, Graham number. Mm -hmm. It is a quantitative method of investing mm -hmm. that was developed by uh, a man called named Benjamin Graham, mm -hmm. a renowned value uh, investor and author mm -hmm. of the I mean uh, one book, uh, the Intelligent Investor. Mm -hmm. So this Graham number provides an estimate of the upper limit uh, of the price, the uh, stock price that investor should pay for the stock. Mm -hmm. So if the stock price is significantly below, significantly below the calculated graph number, yeah. it means that the stock is undervalued yeah. and potentially a good uh, investment opportunity. Mm. But on the other hand, mm -hmm. what happens if the stock price is significantly above the calculated mm -hmm. graph number? Mm -hmm. So it means that the stock is overvalued yeah. and not a favorable uh, investment yep. uh, yeah, to, to consider. But this Method also has a, I mean, uh, their own downside lah. Yeah, pitfalls. Because, huh? Yes, yeah. it, it does not consider factors such as growth prospect, uh, industry trend dynamics, or even uh, qualitative aspect of mm -hmm. a company. So this formula assume that company's earning and book value are stable, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, predictable, which may not always be the case lah. Yeah, yeah. because there's a dynamic in the market, ups and downs and all. Yeah. All right, but. Uh, what we are, I mean, using here at, at Philip for our so-called uh, Philip uh, Dividend Enhanced uh, mm -hmm. account, uh, yeah, managed account services, mm -hmm. we use uh, dogs of the down model, yep. yeah, which I will explain on the next slide. Mm. Okay, um, okay, with this uh, dogs of the down, uh, the strategy involves of uh, selecting a specific number of uh, stocks, usually ten, but. Uh, we just, uh, I mean, uh, adapt the methodology. Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, we don't look at uh, Dow Jones. Yeah. Uh, but in our case, we use uh, Bursa Malaysia yeah, like, as our Bursa Malaysia. Uh, universe. So, universe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So st stocks are selected uh, uh, based on uh, the dividend yields. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Which are calculated by dividing the mm -hmm. annual dividend per share by the mm -hmm. stock price per share. Mm -hmm. So these uh, chosen stocks mm -hmm. are those with the highest dividend yields among the I mean, within this uh, so-called uh, Bursa Malaysia universe. Yeah. So, what's the rationale behind this uh, method? Yeah, uh, quant method method of dogs of the dogs of the dog. This strategy assumes that high dividend yields indicate undervalued stocks or temporarily depressed prices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it aims to take advantage of market inefficiency mm -hmm. and the tendency for the stock price of companies mm -hmm. with temporarily uh, low market sentiment to uh, to to recover yeah. eventually. So. We focus on these high dividend yields. Yeah? Yeah. So this strategy seeks to generate income through dividend payments. Yeah? Uh, so potentially providing a cushion like during market downturns, even the market is in uh, not in a good favorable. favorable. Yeah. Yeah. We, we that, that, that's a buffer lah, because we, we can expect dividend payment from all these uh, stock that we selected yeah. from this uh, so-called uh, methodology. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
let's look at okay the the next slide is how we choose the portfolio now as of yesterday i checked uh, there are 790 companies mm -hmm. listed on the main market mm -hmm. yeah uh, 167 companies uh, on the ace market mm -hmm. and 51 companies so how are we going to identify mm -hmm. or select each and any individual company for our stock selection no mm -hmm. we don't take all of them we don't consider all of them yeah out of this so-called almost 100 stocks listed yeah? mm -hmm. we only take we really look at the top 100 top 5 top 200 yeah mm -hmm. uh, listed in Bursa Malaysia so out of this so-called 200 uh, companies yep. uh, listed in Bursa Malaysia we I mean filter down yeah we narrow down to uh, top 10 top 1 and even top 20 but having said that uh, there's a I mean limit yeah uh, in our portfolio which is currently uh, there, there are only 15 stocks in our portfolio mm -hmm. for this so-called bin yeah they, they, uh, we, we don't have like 20 or 30 kind of uh, stocks mm -hmm. just only 15 stocks so all this data uh, we got it from a Bloomberg we have our own private property uh, quant model yeah, yeah? Uh, like I mentioned just now uh, we adapt uh, this so-called uh, dogs of the Dow uh, methodology yep. uh, we, we look at these uh, top uh, 20 stocks uh, listed on Bursa Malaysia yep. and uh, eventually uh, I mentioned about uh, the, the number of stocks which is 15 uh, we will uh, I mean allocate according I mean uh, equally yep. uh, uh, 15 stock equal weighting for each and individual uh, I mean uh, clients account uh, yeah? so we do uh, monthly rebalancing uh, mm -hmm. on the very I mean on the first business day of the month we will do rebalancing whether or not you want to switch in or switch out certain stocks from the portfolio bear in mind again that all these so-called process uh, are done through a system a model that uh, we, we talked about just now yeah? there's no human yeah. intervention except that on the part of execution yeah. uh, which stock that we want to switch in or switch out okay that execution part uh, will be done by our uh, so-called uh, person in charge. Yeah? Yep. So, but the rest of the processes, uh, stock selection, uh, all will be done by the uh, the system. Yeah. Yep. So we have both conventional and Sharia. So of course we know that. Yeah, we have uh, different different uh, background of investors. Yeah. I mentioned just now. Uh, when, whenever you go to IKEA, you can have any. I mean, everything under one roof. Same goes to Philip. Yep. Yeah? Whether you look at uh, you you want to invest into Sharia or conventional, yes, we have it. Yeah, uh, for you to choose from. Yeah, yep. uh, it's always there for you. I mean, to to utilize or yep. you, for for you to share with your clients and whatnot. Yeah. All right. So, so yeah. yeah. Um. To summarize, it's basically we are using the Dao of the Dao uh, philosophy, but mm -hmm. with our own Malaysia framework, let's so say. And we, the portfolio is also available in convention and Sharia, so to ca cater some of the investors uh, mm -hmm. who have Sharia needs. Lah. So we would like to share some of the companies that we have in each you know, conventional and Sharia portfolio, and maybe after that we can move on to some of the sector outlook mm -hmm. for the sectors that we are actually all weighted in. All right, okay, let's look at what are the stocks that we uh, invest for our client uh, yeah. for this particular mandate okay on this slide we can see that this is for uh, conventional yeah we have astro time.com and whatnot yeah? yeah when you look at the historical uh yield yeah mm -hmm. uh, for example time.com gives you like 15 percent yeah yeah uh uoa development uh, from i mean uh, property side yeah? mm -hmm. sector 16.8 percent all this i mean are some examples that we uh, look into lah when we select mm. uh, stocks into our portfolio mm. yeah? and we look at even if you look at the uh, 12 month forward yield yeah mm. it's very attractive six to seven percent kind of return yeah uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah to me it's quite uh, very very attractive yeah so whether the market uh, is in the down downtrend yeah there's still buffer for you to I mean uh, uh, capitalize uh, to take profit from uh, in terms of the uh, dividend payment yeah right so in terms of sector allocation of course uh, we, we all know that the financial risk all these sectors they provide a good uh I mean, record of dividend, record yeah. of dividend payment yeah. yeah so that's why i mean yeah uh even utilities yeah we overweight on these three uh sectors uh, of course we do have like uh, some others in consumer and property as well yeah so we believe moving forward we can sustain uh, uh, it's not guaranteed uh, but uh, based on the track record 
hmm. uh, we believe uh, yeah. this will i mean uh, provide a sustainable uh, uh, sustainable kind of uh, kind of a return performance, uh, performance uh, for because for investment we noticed that you know uh, even though market is on a downturn hmm. the dividend yield i think uh, from the portfolio i see is around 6 to 7% yep. is yep. able to cushion the performance True. even the market is on a downturn if the market is on upturn perhaps we can get some capital appreciation as well as some dividend yes. from the portfolio itself True. what about the sharia portfolio okay. So uh, for the Sharia portfolio, it's uh, slightly different in terms of the stock allocation. Yeah. Uh, some of them still, like Time.com, UOA, those are uh, Sharia compliant company. So we still have in our Sharia uh, portfolios. But apart from that, uh, if you notice, there's no uh, banking stock except uh, Bank Islam Malaysia. Yeah. Mm, we do have some other financial from financial sector like uh, RC Capital yeah. and uh, property. So, uh, but in terms of the weightage uh, by by sector, uh, we have more sectors to I mean to to look at uh, Not only property, utility, financial. We do have a uh, exposure in auto sector yeah. as well. Burma's Which, auto and Burma's auto. Yes, yep. yes. So, uh, although if you look at the yield, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. from this company. Mm, not as impressive as uh, mm -hmm. the ones on a conventional portfolio, but yeah. still, I think it's quite quite decent. Uh, between five percent to seven percent. Yeah, right? five to seven. Uh, even yeah. Tallyworks, I think eight uh, percent, the highest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think you you can rely on this kind of. Uh, yeah. Stock selection and, and most portfolio. importantly, it's done by quantitative methods. Yes. Yeah, not the conventional kind yes. of stock picking. Yes. There's so, there's no emotional bias in coming up with these so-called stock selections. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, moving on to the uh, next slide, why we like these certain sectors? Like for example, banks. Yeah, we know that bank. There's a track record. They they have been by paying a uh, good income. Yeah, a dividend uh, in the past. Yeah? So apart from attractive dividend, we believe that banks' assets quality is likely to stay resilient mm -hmm. to any potential external slowdown. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, earlier part of this year, we we we've seen. Uh, for example, uh, the banks, uh, uh, I mean, uh, issue in, in the US and whatnot. Yeah. But our banks, I mean, uh, they are still resilient. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, there's not much impact uh, on our uh, domestic banks. Uh, REITs, we know that they've shown strong performance in the last quarter. Revenue and pair reaching pre-pandemic levels, mm -hmm. uh, very I mean, uh, attractive. Uh, despite fears of a global yeah. recession, yeah, they are robust, robust uh, in terms of I mean domestically, yeah, and uh, we expect a growing tourist numbers, yeah, to to, to contribute further uh, in uh, retail rich performance. Utilities, now I mean ESG is the main thing nowadays, yeah, ESG concerns in the utility sector have clouded investors in the past, but we believe this has been overplayed. Yeah, uh, utility system like uh, names that we invest in offer attractive dividend yields. Um, earnings resilience of gas utilities is backed by uh, re regulated assets, while earnings for independent uh, power producers like PP are supported by power purchase agreements and whatnot. So we like this bank rates and uh, utilities yeah. sector. So th there are some other um, sectors that we like also uh, for this particular portfolio, uh, namely uh, auto. Mm -hmm. yeah? uh, if you notice just now, we do have uh, exposure in uh, Burma's auto, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, we we know that uh, automakers earnings should remain solid, yeah, yeah. Uh, driven by resilient domestic consumption. Uh, in terms of uh, looking at property, uh, despite of uh, expectation of subdued pro property sales outlook mm -hmm. uh, due to I mean weaker loan application and potential impact of an mm -hmm. OPR hike uh, this year, uh, our chosen property names have a strong focus mm -hmm. on the mid market and affordable mm -hmm. home segment mm -hmm. uh, rather than those high ends. Yep. So, moreover, these uh, so-called so -called property names, uh, I mean, in terms of dividend yield, are between 5 to 7 percent, quite mm. uh, decent. Yeah? And uh, last but not least, uh, we uh, like plantation yeah. sector. Yeah? Uh, CPO prices may continue to trade sideways. Uh, therefore, we favor uh, selected plantation uh, companies that offer high dividend yields. So, as they have to, I mean, they have uh, demonstrated a strong uh, cash flow generation over the last two years. So that's why we like uh, this uh, so-called uh, sector. Yeah? Yeah. So we talk about this uh, banking, auto, property, uh, plantation and 
some other sectors kan. So uh, yeah, we like these sectors. Uh, we will, I think uh, for now we will, we will continue uh, to have uh, exposure on these uh, few sectors. Yep. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's look at the performance. Yeah, Kim. Mm -hmm. This is hot from the oven. Uh, yeah. We just got it uh, this morning. Yep. Uh, as of August, yeah, end of August. Uh, what happened? Okay, Let, I will share. I would like to share with you. Uh, we have our own model. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, the, the the model that uh, uh, that we set up. Uh, mm -hmm. based on the certain parameters that mm -hmm. I, I mentioned just now, uh, mm -hmm. dogs of the dog kind of a methodology. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of performance, uh, last month, uh, we know that we had a good run in July. Yeah. Uh, in August, I think overall, regionally or even globally, uh, there's a bit yeah, pick up, some retracement. Some retracement. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, our, our so-called uh, mandate uh, Still, I mean, register quite a uh, considerably uh, uh, steady return. Steady, steady return in yeah. line with the uh, benchmark, I would say. Yeah, for yeah. example, for those, I mean, conventional mandate. Uh, if you look at the FUM KLCI index, also mm -hmm. down 0.5. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, what happened to the Sharia? Sharia, we are performed. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 2.6 yeah. up yeah. in August. Uh, uh, Compared to the uh, Abah Shariah Index, down 0.3. Yep. Look at the three, three months performance. Uh, we kind of uh, underperformed the benchmark yep. uh, for the conventional, yep. up 1.1, but um, index, FBM yep. KLCI, up 4.7. Mm. Uh, year to date, also, uh, year to date, we up, uh, outperformed 8.1. Mm -hmm. uh, the index down 2.9. Yeah? Yep. Uh, KLCI 2.9 down. Uh, look at the Sharia mandate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, year to date also, uh, amazingly, yeah, 10.9. Yeah. Up. Uh, whilst the market or the in, in this case, much Sharia index down 0 0.2. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for the one year return, we are perform the market as well. Yeah. Both conventional and Sharia. Yeah. Okay. You may notice that we have. Uh, I also put here the typical account. Yeah. Uh, uh, for both conventional and Sharia. Typical account here meaning that uh, we just select one of the real account uh, mm -hmm. from our, I mean, uh, one of our client's account, uh, typical mm -hmm. account. Mm -hmm. So, if you notice in terms of performance slightly, for example, if you look at the year to date uh, mm -hmm. performance mm -hmm. for conventional, uh, the typical account only up 5.6, mm -hmm. whereas the model up 8.1. Yeah. yeah. Slightly underperformed the model. Why? Because of course, yeah. When you sign up uh, with us for this uh, mandate, uh, of course there are some other fees yeah. uh, that will incur. For example, the upfront fee or service fee, yep. and we do have uh, all these uh, normal uh, annual management fee and what, yep. and whatnot. So that's why that explains like, why there's a slight difference uh, uh. between the model and the real account, so to speak. Yeah? Yep. But having said that, again. If you were to compare the typical account the and uh, against the benchmark, they yeah. still outperform. Yeah? Yep. So I think uh, yeah, it's quite commendable yep. in terms of the performance. Yep. Yeah? yeah, something that you may want to consider, uh, or may you may want to uh, advise to your clients. Yeah, I remember you did some of your research on uh, actually if we invest like a certain amount into mm. dividend enhanced portfolio versus if we do some you know dollar cost averaging things like that we like to share more on your research findings okay great this is interesting kim okay mm -hmm. we we did a so called a research or a, a, i mean simulation yeah mm -hmm. uh, what happened uh, i mean the difference between doing a lump sum investment mm -hmm. or dollar cost averaging mm -hmm. or dca uh, but uh, we did this uh, so-called uh, simulation up to May this year from mm -hmm. from the beginning of this, I mean, the, from the launching date, uh, inception of date of this uh, so-called managed account yep. back in 2020 up yep. to May uh, this year. Okay, we put in 100,000. So, yep. there are a few options. Whether you want to put in 100,000, yeah. one shot, uh -huh. or you can do 10,000 every three months. Yeah. We know that if you have EPF money, you can withdraw every three months, right? Yeah. And this so-called managed account, this uh, bandit yeah. is available not only for cash investment, but also for EPF investment. Yeah. So let's say you invest every three months, you withdraw from EPF every three months, 
10,000, 10,000 mm. every three months. So uh, we will look at the, the, the in terms of the performance, how different mm. it is uh, against uh, lump sum uh, investment. Mm. Yeah? And uh, how about if you invest every six months, every six months you put in 20,000. Yep. Or what happens if you invest uh, 50,000 mm -hmm. uh, every year, what will mm -hmm. happen? Okay, next slide will show you in terms of the... Uh, there you go. Um, the performance. The performance. Yep. Uh, look at one lump sum payment. Look at the I mean table below. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were to put in 100,000 mm -hmm. from the beginning of this uh, inception date of, uh, of this managed account, you will be able to uh, register almost 13% mm -hmm. return from the investment. Mm -hmm. Next, what happens if you top up every three months? Mm. You withdraw from EPF every three months. Mm. Yeah, the return is even higher, 16.23. Mm. Mm. Every six months, you put in mm. 20,000, mm. almost 16% or so. Mm. Yeah? And if you were to put in uh, 50,000 mm. uh, every 12 months, mm. that will be 13.25. Mm. So, this shows that dollar cost averaging is another way for you to uh, consider. Yep. Yeah? Uh, maybe uh, it's not easy for you to put in 100,000 yeah, at one correct, shot. Correct. Yeah? So this will be another alternative for you, an option mm -hmm. for you to consider. Yeah? Put in, uh, I mean, uh, every three months, every, every one month, up to you uh, at your convenience. Yeah? But uh, like I mentioned just now, you can withdraw three months every three months from your EPF uh, yep. funds. Yeah, this is for conventional. Let's yep. look at Sharia. Sharia. Yeah. Okay, what happened to Sharia? The performance is slightly lesser than conventional. Yes. Yeah. Understandable. Uh, Maybe because of the banking stocks. Uh, true. Most of the Sharia portfolios don't have banking stocks. Exactly. As well as retail rates like Parian rates, Sunway rates, mm. and IGB mm. rates that pay better dividend yield. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. But having said that. Let's look at your EPF performance, EPF returns. Yeah. How do we compare your EPF return against this so-called mandate? Yep. Yeah. Slightly, I would say, better as yep. well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So now I'm here today to share with you all this information. So take your time. Yeah. Maybe something uh, for you to uh, ponder upon. Yeah. Yep. Or uh, perhaps. Talk to your clients. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now I think this is my slide, my last slide on uh, dividend enhancement. Yeah. So mm. after that, uh, we have covered uh one of our, our flagship products uh, for mm. PCM, and we all know that Philly Capital Malaysia is a well integrated uh financial house. We oh, we not only have uh Philly Capital Management Center Berhad under the roof of Philly Capital Malaysia, we also have Philip Mutual Berhad, and even in Philip Mutual Berhad itself, we also have our in house funds. Today we will be talking uh, uh, two of our flagship in-house unit trust funds managed by our in-house fund managers, uh, well-run team expertise, uh, around 20 uh, headcounts in the team as well. Mm. So we will be covering Philip Master Equity Growth Fund as well as Philip Dana Aman. Encik Ding would like to share more on that. Okay, next, let's move on to the next agenda for today. Yeah. Uh, I'll be talking about PMEGF, our flagship fund, Philip Master Equity Growth yeah. Fund. And next, I will talk about Philip Dana Aman. Yeah. And Dana Aman is a Sharia fund, right? Yes, both yeah. are equity funds. Yeah, yeah. But PMEGF is non Sharia, Dana Aman is Sharia yeah. compliant. All right, before we move further, um, I think uh, many of you have seen this slide before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, our quality investing. Yes, our yeah. approach. How do we deal with our, I mean, how do we manage our so-called portfolio? Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, we like to look at the um, high return yeah, on invested capital uh, that is sustainable. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, we, of course, we look at valuation, mm -hmm. whether or not they are attractive. Mm -hmm. uh, we look at the sustainability of the, I mean, competitive advantage that a company has. Yeah. And uh, we also look at the uh, integrity of the management. Yeah, yeah? And that's honest, the most important yes, thing true. as well. And honest mm -hmm. and able management, important. Yeah? Yeah. And last but not least, the, I mean, good and yeah. predictable growth prospect uh, from, uh, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, companies that we, 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 we yeah. invest in. Yeah. yeah? Okay, so this is our so-called uh, the core uh, uh, investment, investment philosophy. philosophy yeah. Yeah. 
that uh, we employ at Philip Capital. All right, let's move on to next slide. This is up mm -hmm. to uh, 31st August last mm -hmm. month. Mm -hmm. um, there are about 60 odd uh, equity funds uh, currently in, in Malaysia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course, we are not the largest. Yeah. Uh, but we are not the worst performer. Lah. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to uh, showcase here. Mm. Uh, of course, we don't uh, perform uh, as good as uh, Dana Bestari where uh, it recorded. One year return is 25%. Yeah, 25%. Wow, amazing. Yeah. But our Dana Aman, for example, one year return 5.3%. Uh, and our PME Jeff 3.88 quite commendable. Uh, I think looking at some other funds like Dana Makmur uh, or East Spring, yeah, yeah, we I mean slightly better than uh, yeah. those funds. Yeah. 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 So something to consider, but also yeah, uh, in terms of the fund size, we are not uh, as big as uh, the rest of the. Hey, look at the Dana Best. The fund size is only about 20 million. Yeah. Yep. Right. So, yeah, so it doesn't matter whether the fund size is big or small. Uh, at the end of the day, how our fund managers, how, or how do we manage the fund, that, that matters the most. Yeah? Yep. All right, so let's look at in more details uh, in terms of the uh, what are the funds. I'm not going to talk about each and the fund uh, that uh, on the last, on the previous slide. Today, yep. I will cover uh, just two funds, uh, which is uh, Philip Master Equity Growth Fund. Yep. Uh, and later on, uh, Dana Aman. Yep. Okay, uh, Philip Master Equity Growth Fund. Uh, yeah, uh, this is our flagship fund. Mm -hmm. uh, we have about 50 odd million currently fund size, mm -hmm. one of the biggest fund that we have uh, mm -hmm. in house. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, just now I mentioned about the uh, managed account services provided by PCM, yeah. uh, where you can start using your own money with a, as low as 50,000 or or you can use your EPF fund to invest with as minimum as 10,000 to start yeah. off. Yeah, But for those who have a so-called uh, lesser amount of money to invest in, you yeah. can consider PMEGF. Uh, although we don't use uh, so-called AI methodology, quant method for mm -hmm. this investment, mm -hmm. yeah, but still something to, I mean, to consider yeah. uh, with as low as 500 ringgit, you can start, you can have your initial investment yeah, for this fund. Yeah. And then moving on, Moving on, you can always top up yeah, uh, using this dollar cost averaging I mentioned just now. Uh, what I mean, uh, how's the performance between lump sum investment and dollar cost averaging? Mm. Where dollar cost averaging perform better than lump sum investment? So in this case, yeah, you can start small and top up small as well. Yeah, ongoing yeah. Uh, investment yeah, from yeah. time to time, whether one month, monthly, uh, every three months and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, move on to the next slide. This is quite uh, outdated actually. This is up to July in terms of mm. our top holdings. Um, mm. We like Great Tech, Mega First, Aurelius. These are, I mean, top five holdings that we have currently. We overweight on technology. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we know that technology is kind of a main driver currently in the economy. Yep. Uh, everybody talk about AI and whatnot. Yeah. Yep. And iPhone just launched uh, the new one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, last night. It's all about technology. Yeah. Day in, day out, yeah. You, you can't live without your handphone nowadays. I think, yeah. Yeah. We also like industrial product, consumer product, financial, yeah, and healthcare. Mm. Now, um, uh, in terms of performance, yep. uh, maybe I can just skip the, because this is up to July. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, this one up uh, the next slide. Okay, this is a uh, uh, latest up to August. Yeah. Last month return we underperform slightly yeah uh, the benchmark uh, we did 0.2 whereas the fbm amass the benchmark recorded 0.4 yeah. uh, last month but looking at year to date uh, return uh, performance we outperformed them yeah 0.7 yeah. against 0.4 yeah uh, unfortunately in terms of ranking uh, down from 44 number 44 last july uh, in august uh, I mean, our position dropped to number 53. Yeah, currently we have slightly above 10% uh, mm. cash holding. Yeah, mm. so yeah, we took profit uh, from I mean some of the stock and yeah, uh, we took some uh, yeah. private placement but as well. Don't mind, please. I think this return is only based on one line return. Yes. Yeah. So maybe I think. Uh, in the upcoming slide, we'll be sharing you in terms of one year return, how mm. we are compared against mm, other yes. peers. All right. Yep. So, next slide. Okay, this is uh, interesting. Uh, 
Okay, uh, just look at the yellow line yeah. uh, with its PMEGF. We, yeah. We're not talking about Philip recovery today. Uh, PMEGF, uh, last month in August, we recorded a 3.88 return. Uh, return. Yeah, one okay, year plus, one year yeah. rolling return, meaning from uh, September, September, sorry, September last, last year, year uh -huh. up to 31st August. Mm -hmm. uh, just now, uh, earlier, mm. uh, last month, uh, we our performance performance uh, 3.88 yeah hmm. uh, one year rolling return yep. and in terms of ranking uh, out of uh, 68 yeah we did this so called uh, peers yeah. uh, we are number 19 and we dropped from quartile 1 to quartile 2 uh, back yeah. in august yeah. slightly yeah slightly uh, yeah okay but still yeah we are top half uh, yeah yep. uh, all right uh, let's move on to the next Okay, Dana Aman, uh, the next fund. The Sharia offering. Okay, now, again, when you come to Philip, we have everything uh, for you to choose from. Okay, if you don't uh, prefer uh, conventional or non-Sharia, we have Dana Aman for you yeah. to consider, yeah, yeah. which is a Sharia compliant uh, unit trust fund. Again, uh, it is an equity fund as well. Uh, in terms of the fund size, not as big, uh, 23.9 million as of uh, this one up to July, yeah, mm -hmm. up to July. But still slightly uh, bigger compared to the uh, Dana Bestari just now. It's about 20 million only, right? Okay. Um, again, very low initial investment required, mm -hmm. only 500,000, 500 ringgit, mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can always uh, make a additional investment, 100 ringgit, 100 ringgit, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, regularly, yeah, monthly. Mm -hmm half yearly yeah whatever uh, again i need to stress over and over again yeah uh, the benefit of using dollar cost averaging yeah mm. uh, you, you with something that you can employ you, you can apply yeah you can consider instead of a lump sum investment okay um not much different this is uh, in terms of our top holdings uh, focus point we have greater as well and we have mpi yeah. capital a uh, currently, uh, this is up to July actually. In terms of our cash holding, uh, we have increased a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think we, we just go to the next slide. Uh, this is also uh, quite outdated up to July. I'll move on to the next slide. Okay, this is the latest one up to August. Mm. Okay, uh, July we had uh, about 4% in cash but we have been able to increase uh, to 6.8% uh, cash level currently. Mm -hmm. Although uh, the farm manager intends to increase our cash level up to 10%. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of a uh, benchmark, we are in line, mm -hmm. yeah, 0.3 in August recorded, mm -hmm. as well as the benchmark also 0.3. Mm -hmm. uh, ranking drops a little bit from number 23 to number 30. Mm -hmm. But looking at year-to-date performance, still outperform the market, 3.2 against like down 0 0.01 yep. yeah so quite commendable yeah, something to consider as well so we like the fight the, the, this fight uh, again for those who wish to uh to, to invest in something yep. which is i mean sharia compliant yeah uh yeah the, there's a choice for you to i mean to, to consider yeah okay uh in terms of the one year rolling return mm -hmm. Not much different from uh, July and uh, compared to August. In July, uh, our one year rolling return of 5.38. Last mm -hmm. month, down a little bit, 5.32. But in terms of ranking, out of 60 peers, we are number 17. Yeah. Uh, remain uh, as well. I mean, similar just like uh, in back in July, number 17. All right, I, I think, yeah. So uh, we've uh, talked about the uh, managed account services, mm -hmm. uh, which is dividend enhanced uh, to be exact. And then we also talk about the uh, PMEGF as well as uh, Philip Dana Aman. So there's always something for you to, um, there's always something yeah. for everyone uh, at Philip Capital. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Anjit Zainuddin, for his very insightful sharing, very comprehensive uh, kind of sharing to the audience. We are happy to take the questions from the floor. Uh, feel free to type your question in the chat box, right? Yeah. 
We have a question from our chat box, uh, basically. Uh, return on investment is analyzed or total return? Uh, basically, just now, I think the, the, the return that we show, say 5.32% for the example of Dana Aman is a uh, total return, right? Total return, yes. One year return. Right? Yes, one year, yeah. one year rolling return. Yeah. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, total return correct. It's not annualized. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to look at annualized, that will be on the, I think previous slide. Uh, how to? For example, annualized. Do we have annualized return? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah I... For example, Dana Aman. Uh -huh. Um. Okay. Here you can see the annualized re re return. Uh, sorry. Okay, this slide four nine five. Okay, this is the one. Uh, annualized return, for example, for Dana Ahmad, uh, is this annualized? Annualized right? one, one year return. Uh, I think this one year return, return is uh, oh, this is, is also, from September, September last year okay, to okay. Uh, to oh. August. Then highly likely the return that we show here is actually okay. the total uh, actual return. Yep. Yeah. Oh, we don't have annualized return. Yeah. Yeah. No, we don't have annualized return here. Yep. Uh, let's look at if we have any other other question. Yeah. Happy to take another questions from the audience, right? Okay. If there's no questions from the floor. I would like to end the session today, right? Thank you so much, everyone, for dialing in our session, and thank you so much, Enzik Enzik Zainuddin, for spending time, right, with us, uh, and the sharing to the audience today, right? We'll see you guys in the next Philip Mastermind. Thank you. Thank you.